So you want a reptile that leaves a smaller footprint, something a little bit smaller than a ball python or a corn snake, something that fits in your life. And today we're going to talk about the five, the top five coolest small reptiles that you can keep. I'm Adam. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. So just to be clear, we're not talking about from the very smallest to the fifth smallest, right? Because that'd be pretty boring. We talk about, you know, like leaf chameleons and ring snakes and thread snakes and stuff you wouldn't want to keep in captivity. And even if you could, it'd be wild caught, probably full of parasites. You probably couldn't find one anyway. So we're going to talk about ones that are attainable, that are captive bred and uh, animals that you'd actually want to keep and would thrive in your care. Number five. William's Blue Cave Gecko. Now, these guys are a lot smaller than my buddy uh, Sarah over here. These guys are very small. Like, we're talking two and a half to three inches. Super tiny. They are sometimes called electric blue geckos because, well, I mean, obviously, right? It makes sense. These guys come from a very small place in Tanzania, which is part of Africa. And although they're called a cave gecko, you're going to find them out in the sun for the most part of the morning and then hiding in foliage for the rest of the day. But if you do want to keep this very small gecko, there are some things that you definitely have to consider. First of all, they're small. So they're escape artists. So you want something that's about the size of, I don't know, the smallest exoterra tall that you can get 12 by 12 by 18 for a pair, something like that. And you want to make sure that it's well planted or there's a lot of places for it to hide but everything's super secure because they're super small. And if they get a log or a rock or something that falls on them, it doesn't take much to make them into a pancake and then you're gonna be getting your new friend off of the side of the tank with a hose. Some of the more important things too, UVB, they need a 5.0, something like that. Not quite a desert bulb, but something that produces quite a bit of UVB. They need a higher humidity and insects is what they eat. So as far as my research told me, Feeding them a prepared diet like you would with a gargoyle gecko or a crested gecko isn't really going to cut it with a Williams Blue Cave gecko because they don't have one <laughs> that's made for these guys yet. Although they aren't super popular, they're becoming more popular and becoming more easily found in captivity. And in fact, I saw one at an expo a few months ago. Let's move on to number four, smooth green snakes. Now, I know you've heard of rough green snakes before and likely you've heard of smooth green snakes too. The difference is rough green snakes, although more popular, they do grow a little bit larger and they've got a keeled scale, keeled dorsal scale, whereas smooth green snakes don't. These are really cool to me because I never realized it till I was a little bit older, but I've seen these things in my backyard before. They're endemic to most of leopard geckos kissing my neck, it's getting, getting fresh. They're endemic to this area here. Just look at the map. It's pretty unique because it's kind of like shape you know so this is a place where it's not going to be super hot uh, in the summer super cold in the winter there's places for them to hide and they will find uh, like burrows and things like that of rodents in the wild in order to survive the winter these guys are great if you don't want to feed live even frozen thawed rodents because what they're going to eat in the wild and in captivity are things like crickets roaches worms things like that They'll even eat spiders if you feed them spiders, which is awesome because some people don't like to feed rodents. That makes sense, which is why garter snakes is a great option, but not super small and they don't fit in this list. And when you see one of these things, they always kind of look like a baby because they grow 14 to 20 inches on average, which seems a lot bigger than, you know, two and a half to three for the gecko we just talked about, but it's a snake, right? What makes them great as pets is, well, they're small, so you don't need a big enclosure. Um, you're gonna find them in the trees and on the ground as well. They're gonna be really easy to take care of because the humidity doesn't need to be extreme, the heat doesn't need to be extreme, and they don't need any UVB lighting. So as long as they've got a day and night cycle and a hot spot like a thermal gradient, then you're good to go with these snakes. And I mean, like, they're super cute. And also, they kind of move their head back and forth and do this weird, like, Michael Jackson looking thing, I think, uh, when they're looking for prey. So I don't know, I think they're cool. They move cool, they look cool. That's number four. Number three, and maybe the most interesting on the list for me, pygmy pythons. These guys are super cool. Some people call them anthill pythons. 
which makes sense. It's where they hang out a lot of the time. They're very small, they're pythons, and although they only grow up to like 20 inches, when you hold them, they still feel like a python where a lot of these other species, they feel delicate, right? With a pygmy python, although it is small, it feels like you're holding a spotted python, a children's python, something like that, or even like a ball python just in a smaller form. They still have that kind of being able to grab you type feel and this cool texture with their scales as well. I think pygmy pythons are awesome. They come from Western Australia, but they are captive bred. This is something that's going on a lot in the US now. Uh, you can find a little bit in Canada and the UK as well. If you're from somewhere and you have a pygmy python or you know of where to get it, put it in the comment section. People ask about these all the time and I don't really know where to direct them, right? Depends on your locale and where you are to get one of these guys, but perhaps maybe the most interesting one on the list. And it, it pained me not to put them a little bit higher because they do so well in captivity. These guys eat well, uh, they're easy to breed. They, you can keep them in a 20 gallon their entire life and it's pretty roomy. Some people will say 10, I don't, don't do that. 20 gallon is what I would suggest or bigger. These guys are awesome. Heat and humidity, super easy. They're really tolerable for handling. I mean, pygmy pythons all the way. Now, number two, we've talked about on this channel before, web-footed geckos. One of my favorites. What are the ones that I would love to keep but just cannot find? Now this isn't the case in most parts of the US. From what I understand, I posted a video about these guys and everyone was saying, ah, you could find them here, there, and everywhere, right? But I mean, I live in the Arctic, so it's kind of tough to find them. These guys, four inches on average is where you're gonna find them. You can co-have them, which is really neat because most of the time you'd never keep like a leopard gecko, a male with a male, because I mean, you'd have one leopard gecko at the end of it and then like some assembly required leopard gecko on the side. But with these guys, you can keep males together. You can keep females together. It is really cool. They're really forgiving. Webfoot geckos are awesome. Now you're gonna find these guys uh, in sandy parts of deserts. That's where you're gonna find them. So as such, you can keep them on sand. And for once, you're not gonna find a bunch of these I know more than you reptile people who will tell you that sand as a loose substrate is bad for these guys. Sand is what is preferred from people who actually keep these and breed these animals. In my opinion, web-footed geckos actually would make a great beginner animal as long as you can keep up with their speed because it does take a while to acclimate them for handling. Uh, and of course, they're small, so they're quick and they're gonna be in a smaller enclosure as well, which is kind of nice because it keeps you know less of a footprint and it's easy to heat and the humidity is gonna be rather low. So your problem isn't gonna be with humidity that's too low and you can't keep it high enough, it's gonna be the other way around. Some people even use a fan over the top to blow away the humidity because they do like it rather dry. And I mean, who doesn't like a nocturnal insect eater? Watching these guys at night after the lights go out, just chasing around little crickets and stuff, I don't know, super cool to me. Number one, Western hognose snakes. I mean. Okay, they're not super small, I get it, but they are pretty small. I mean, we're talking, if you get a three foot female, that is a big snake. And males, on average, a foot and a half is where you're gonna find them. They are pretty small when it comes to snakes, and they're so darn cute. These guys are great. I did a whole video about them last week, watch it up here. I think these guys are one of the snakes that are really underrated in comparison to a lot of other snakes although they're gaining in popularity and you can find them a lot more reasonably priced and they're a lot more available in comparison to even five years ago. Plus, of all the ones on the list that we talked about today, there are more morphs of Western Hognose than anything else, by a mile. You can get whatever you want if you want white ones, if you want darn near black ones, or anything in the middle, you can get in a Hognose Snake. And we're talking about Westerns, that is my preferred, I mean there's a bunch of different species and stuff, but Western hognose snakes, my first snake, the one that I love the most, I think, and you can keep them in smaller enclosures. A lot of people say a 20 gallon is overkill. I don't think so. 20 gallons is where I like to keep mine, but as a baby, you can keep them in a six quart. Some people keep males in a 12 quart their entire life and say it's cool. So it really is up to you. I would suggest, think about it, do your research, watch the care guide right here, and then get yourself a hognose snake if you decide that it's right for you and keep it in a 20 gallon or larger, please, for crying out loud. So if you like small, kind of medium body type snakes with a keeled scale, an upturned snout, a uh, hog nose type attitude, like only a hog nose could have, and a little bit of rear fang venom to sweeten the pot, maybe number one hog nose snakes, westerns, are right for you. So there you go. My top five coolest, smallest, 
whatever this video is going to be called, Reptiles. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. We've got a contest going on right now. And if you go ahead in this link right here, go to this video, type down a lizard emoji in the comment section of that video, and you'll be entered to win a hoodie or a t-shirt. Once we get to 10,000 subscribers, which should be around Valentine's Day, something like that, we're going to start giving away some more free stuff. We're going to do some more contests. Uh, make it a little bit more fun to follow the channel. So hit the subscribe button, put in the comment section what you'd love to see next week. Every video I pick because of you guys, what you suggest the week before. Whew, that was a... All right, see you on Monday.